On the courts at Stanley Street, Auckland, are visiting American Davis Cup players. The weather for their exhibition games is dull and overcast, but seldom has better tennis been seen in Auckland. Talbot and Malloy, America's 1946 doubles champions, play an exhibition game against the New Zealanders Edwards and Mackenzie. The visitors are at the far end. Edwards serves. Edwards comes into volley, but the serve was a fault. Edwards to serve again. The New Zealanders tried hard, but the match went 6-2, 6-2 to the Americans. Sometimes it looked too easy. After the doubles, Ron McKenzie, New Zealand singles champion, played Ted Schroeder, American national champion of 1942. McKenzie played steadily to win the first set. Schroeder serves. Schroeder has the strongest backhand in the American team, and he may partner Kramer in the Davis Cup doubles. After the game, the Americans' manager, Mr. Walter Pate, introduces his team. The 1946 doubles champions, Gardner Malloy and Bill Talbot, Tom Brown, the youngest member, Ted Schroeder, ex-singles champion whom we saw in action, and Frank Parker, three times America's champion singles player. The present singles champion, Jack Kramer, has a few words to say on their visit. On behalf of the American Davis Cup team, myself and Captain Pate, I'd like to thank all the people of New Zealand for all the kind treatment we've had, and I hope in the near future you'll be sending some of your players to America so that our people can see them in action. Thank you. At Rickerton today, the Governor-General opens another Disabled Servicemen's Training Centre, the fifth in New Zealand. Mr Skinner, Minister of Rehabilitation, represents the Government, but the Government provides the buildings for these centres and leaves it to the Disabled Servicemen's Re-Establishment League to run them. The training and employment provided here for disabled men is an important part of our successful rehabilitation scheme. In pleasant surroundings, men from Canterbury, West Coast, Nelson and Marlborough learn new jobs of their own choosing and suited to their abilities. The sale of their work helps to keep the centres going. While they learn, the men can take their time and do a good job. From experienced instructors, the men receive individual tuition. Once it was thought that disabled men were fit only for jobs of minor skill, but by studying the disabilities of these men, the centres have discovered how machines and tools can be altered for their use. This man is weaving on a loom specially constructed for him. Disabled men from World War I find work here too. These men are making artificial limbs in metal and in wood. The making of furniture is one of the centre's biggest jobs, and the furniture turned out is among the best on the market. It helps to meet a big demand. Knocking off time comes each day, these men go home knowing that they've been doing something worth doing. At Oakuni, this sawmill is a good example of what it takes when it comes to milling the timber New Zealand needs in huge quantities today. The Rimu logs are drawn into the mill and the sawdust from all the cutting down is used as a constant fuel for the mill engines. There's many a stage between feeding the logs up to the saws and wheeling out finished planks, dressed and ready for use. On the vertical saws, the logs are first broken down. From the vertical saws, the first cuts are drawn away to the circular saws for further cutting. This is tough work and sometimes dangerous.
On these saws, each plank is cut one at a time. But this deal frame saw cuts several at a time and gets out five planks where other saws get four. This mill, unlike many others, not only cuts the timber, it also dresses the planks ready for use. The sawmilling industry here has helped to establish a sound business community. Last year, Oakuni supplied over four million feet of timber for use in New Zealand. Now out to the stacks, stacks of timber that are helping to meet the heavy demands of our building programs. At Kensington Park, Wangaree, the a and Society's Jubilee Show gets underway with a record attendance and record entries in all classes. The cream of North Auckland stock gathers itself up for the Grand Parade. Judging the various entries keeps judges busy, and getting their horses into trim has kept many an owner busy. No show would be complete without the jumping events. If spectators got little in the way of thrills, they got their money's worth just watching the splendid style of the horses and seeing some first-rate horsemanship. An innovation was a sharing competition. The competitors shake hands before they get going. Points are awarded for time, finish and style over three sheep. The winner took seven minutes, 25 seconds. Old hands find interest in seeing how the youngsters are coming on these days. For country folk, this is nothing new to watch, but for town folk, it's quite a novelty. This show, like all others in New Zealand, helps to bring town and country closer together. If the sharers earned a suitable reward, so did those who'd been competing in the jumping, and it all made for a grand day out. Now the side shows are getting down to business in traditional style. Just a little out in front to bring them all inside. These acrobats know it pays to advertise, but it didn't cost more to see another fine display. You could certainly hear it miles away. Girls' marching teams make a smart turn. It's a lovely show for the officers. This year's show has proved again they're coming on fine in Wangarei.